Hey, what's going on everybody? Donovan here with Ernie Williamson Music. And I had some folks ask me recently uh, on the, my Trumpet Thoughts channel why I haven't posted recently. And I had other folks kind of make some comments. And so I thought, well, kind of an update is long overdue. And, and I won't really get into a long answer tonight, but we'll try to maybe kind of break out uh, some more information for you later. But uh, essentially, you know, I created this channel mainly as sort of like a digital notebook or I guess a vlog of my sort of experiments with embouchure to try to sort out the issues I was having and trying to just understand like how to play better and more efficiently. And I'd had a lot of problems I felt like with my playing from uh, honestly from like probably high school on and had a re like some level of success, you know, went to college on a trumpet scholarship and stuff like that, but just never felt like, I always felt like there were really big blocks and gaps in my ability that I, no amount of practice seemed to fix. Matter of fact, the more I practiced, the worse I would often seem to get. Uh, and it was really frustrating, which led me to take lessons with all kinds of teachers, which has been great. I mean, like, uh, you know, the knowledge I have from so many of our trumpet gurus, Roger Ingram, Bobby Shu, Jim Manley, I mean, just kind of a long list of folks I've taken lessons from. And of course, I own like every method book, <laughs> more or less trying to figure all this out. Um, and started kind of having, you know, getting a few things sort of worked out and, and understanding some stuff. Uh, but uh, during the pandemic, I ran across an interview that Lewis Dowdswell did, and I'll try to find one of these interviews he's done and put it in the show notes, um, but, or put it in the description below, I mean. Um, and, uh, but he talked about how he kind of discovered the Reinhardt system, or took some lessons in the in, uh, Reinhardt, um, um, the, the Reinhardt school, uh, for lack of better words, and, um, that has just totally changed everything he thought he knew about trumpet armature now in trumpet playing now if you're not familiar with lewis's playing lewis is maybe like a, a way to describe it he's sort of like wayne bergeron's um european protege uh he's from the uk uh younger guy and just like you know that kind of just phenomenal crazy commercial player that just has like unbelievable range and sound and all that stuff. And so when someone like that tells you that like they have uncovered things that have changed everything they think they knew about uh, playing, it should grab your attention. At least it did mine. And I remember I had been given uh, the encyclopedia when I was in college because I had so many questions about why things didn't work. And so an instructor was like, well, you might try looking through this. And anyone who's gone through any amount of the Reinhardt stuff knows that like it's really very hard. You really can't like teach it to yourself. Um, so anyways, during this interview, Lewis talks about taking lessons with uh, Chris LaBarbera and mentioned that there's uh, you know a couple of guys you can get lessons from. So I was kind of interested. So I figured, well, let me let me check this out. So I reached out to a couple of the, the probably the, the two most well-known um, trumpet teachers for Reinhardt are Chris LaBarbera and Dave Sheets. And uh, my lesson with Chris was great. Uh, you know, Chris is a great player. And uh, he, what he mainly did was just sort of talked, it was like a lesson in, in about Reinhardt. You know, he's just sort of like kind of gave me the overview of what it was like to study with Reinhardt, gave me a lot of the routines, uh, watched me play a little bit, gave me some feedback. But it was just a nice sort of general overview. I'm like, here's Reinhardt. Um, the lessons I took with Dave Sheets, which I think I had, I think I had a total of three lessons with him. With him. Um, those were really interesting. He basically gave me a series of exercises to play. These are all video lessons. So he would send me a list of things to play. I would record them kind of like I'm doing this video and I'd send him the link. He would watch the video and then would send me a few sentences of things to correct. And I remember the first time I got like my feedback from the first video, I thought like, that's the lesson. Like I just sent him some videos and he just sent me a few sentences. That's all I get. But <laughs> man, it was like to the point. It was honestly like the best lesson I've ever had. Uh, and some of the sentences would say, you know, you need to read this section in the encyclopedia. Uh, other things he would tell me what to do and whatever.
But the big thing that he would do is, is or that he did is he typed me. And, and Reinhardt, really when it comes down to it, there are, really when it comes down to it, there's three different embouchure types. And out of those, honestly, there's really kind of two if you want to keep it really simple. Um, you, you're uh, either an upstream or downstream player. And then the other thing that's important is to know your pivot. Now, I, I do want to talk about that a little bit tonight just because I do think that's important. So a lot of us, when we've heard the term pivot, we think the pivot means this, right? Like pivot down for high notes maybe or pivot up for low notes or whatever. Yeah, that's just not at all what that means. Um, your pivot is the, the track that the mouthpiece and your lips, so your, your what Reinhardt calls your outer embouchure, slides up and down on the, your inner embouchure, which is basically for trumpet players, our teeth. To be clear, the mouthpiece isn't sliding on your lips, but that rather the mouthpiece and lips are moving up and down on the teeth as one motion, like as one unit, I mean, one unit. And for some players, we will move the embouchure track down as we ascend, uh, and other players, we will move it up as we ascend. And it's pretty easy to discover which one you are. Um, you can just play a, a, a thing where you're just slurring from C in the staff to G on top of the staff and try one time where you pull down and try another time where you push up. So you do a couple of them and just see which one it works. And again, to, to be clear, we're not talking about like sliding it up or down like that way out over your lips. We're talking about like the whole thing moving up or down. That's me kind of pulling the whole thing down on my embouchure track. Here's pulling it, pushing up. <laughs> so one clearly works and one clearly doesn't. So knowing your embouchure type, knowing whether you're upstream or downstream, and then knowing what your pivot is, do you pull down to a center or push up to ascend, uh, were two of the big keys that, that I've got. And then uh, no, beyond, in addition to that, there's like a whole wealth of information in the encyclopedia that like answers like so many of the common pitfalls and questions that we brass players have. But if you don't know your type and if you don't know your pivot, it's very difficult for all of the rest of the information to really make sense, if that makes any sense. So um, you really need to get with a qualified Reinhardt teacher uh, to, to really nail down what your type is. Uh, and what I think your pivot, you can likely figure out for yourself. Here's why this is so important though. For the longest time, for most of my playing, I always had a low placement like that. And there's a general rule of thumb uh, in the Reinhardt School of Thought that essentially, if whichever lip predominates inside underneath the rim uh, determines if you're upstream or downstream. So if you have more upper lip than bottom lip, you're a downstream player. It, it has nothing to do with the angle of the, the horn. That like literally has nothing to do with it. Um, so more upper lip than, than, than lower lip, downstream player. Air goes down when it, le when it escapes your embouchure into the cup. If you have uh, more bottom lip than upper lip, you're an upstream player. And whether you're upstream or downstream for most people is a factor of your overbite and just teeth formation, length of your teeth, that, uh, that kind of stuff. Like it's just something, some people can pick types, but most people like you're just one type or the other. Well, I'm a type four upstream player, but because uh, so many of my idols had higher placements and some of my teachers uh, use higher placements. I just thought I, you know, I should be playing with a higher placement. Of course, most teachers do, they teach you how to, uh, play the way they play. Right. So, uh, all these years of lessons and, you know, I'm trying to play like my idols do with these this higher placement reading like the Claude Gordon book and all that kind of stuff. And there's nothing wrong with any of that. If you have that type of embouchure, like what, what Gordon has. But once I was typed as a type four, uh, which means that I'm an upstream player with a lower mouthpiece placement, learned what my pivot was, and then got a few other kind of keys for me that are really important. I just haven't had anywhere near like the difficulties that I've had in the past. Now, don't get me wrong. It's not like I like never miss a note anymore and like don't have a 
bad day or something like but my bad days today are anywhere near like what they used to be like a bad day today is still totally passable in most situations i still make mistakes i'm not a perfect trumpet player i'm still an amateur trumpet player but gone really are the days where i'm just like i don't know why i can't do this that or the other uh every time i practice i get better um i play better i sound better like um just like everything's kind of working. So for me, that, that Reinhardt thing has been just a huge turnaround. And uh, I'll probably go more into it, maybe another video with a, some, a, a basic explanation of my understanding of the types. But from here on out, because I never started this to be like a trumpet teacher for anyone, I'm just sharing what I'm discovering. I'm mostly going to focus on the things that will apply to me as a type four upstream low placement player. So um, if that's not you, the stuff I'm mentioning may not be super useful for you. <laughs> so, but anyway, uh, I would encourage any of you, especially the fo folks, if, if you are struggling, man, Reinhardt had it all figured out. He really did. Like he figured out all the different, the, the, the majority of all the embouchure types that make up the majority of our brass embouchures that are out there. And he uh, put it kind of codified everything identified how all of it works and you got to find the one that your natural makeup supports and play using those tendencies and like you're just going to have a level of, of success that you've never been able to get before so um you're welcome to reach out to me if you are looking for a reinhardt teacher i i'm not a teacher but i can point you out to actually if you're looking for a reinhardt teacher there's a great reinhardt forum uh on trumpet herald so trumpetherald.com Click on the forums link, uh, scroll down, and then the various schools one, there's a Reinhardt thread that you can post in there if you're looking for a teacher and recommendations can be made there. I know like the top teachers right now, Doug Elliott, who's a trombone player, uh, but, but uh, by all reports, a really good overall Reinhardt and Amisher teacher, uh, Dave Wilkins, Chris LaBarbera, Dave Sheets, and there's a few other guys that are doing this as well. So anyway, hope this uh, video serves. Hope you find it useful and uh, yeah. I'll make some more Reinhardt content uh, in the near future. Take care.